that place the brand the brand placement. Not sponsored. All right. So I'm here in my dirty garage. I'm back home. Work day went good. Made some money. Now time to make some more money. Got an Etsy order. It is for our sawdust over glitter um, Etsy shop. So it's a picture frame with a painting of a sewing machine. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And I will walk you through everything that we do. Um, unfortunately, hopefully you see all the mess in here. There's a lot of sawdust everywhere. Maybe that's where we got our name. But uh, my garage is filthy right now. And the goal in the long run is to get this thing cleaned up, organized, so I can shoot more content for you guys out here because uh this is like my this is my baby like nita has her baby this guy i love my table saw easily my favorite tool until i get my melco once i get my melco we'll see hopefully i'll still keep up with this because you know i love this but i have a feeling i'll love uh love that melco too so let's go ahead let's get into the video hopefully you guys enjoy it hopefully you learn something if you haven't already click like subscribe and share this video with a friend that might be interested thank you all right so the sign that the person ordered is an eight by eight sign uh luckily i got a scrap wood that isn't big enough for all the signs we make but it's perfect for an eight by eight we're gonna go ahead rip this thing down to eight by eight and i'll show you how i do it now guys i have a miter saw but i prefer the table saw for all of my cuts every cut i can make i'm making it on the table saw it's so much freaking easier all I had to do was build this uh, this awesome cross-cut sled, so it it makes cutting just ten times easier. I use a stop block right here for whenever I have to do lots of cuts. As you see, I got tape and hammers, everything. Big workspace. I, I'm kind of short on space out here right now, so it kind of acts as a table, and I do a lot of staining. That's why it's so dark. It's my workhorse, man. I do everything on this thing. I love it. So let's go ahead. We're going to measure this out. And the cool thing about my uh, table saw, sorry guys, the lighting in here is not the best, but okay, as you can see right on the edge of the line here, this is where the edge of the cut's going to be, and I have the eight right perfectly lined up with that, and then I go ahead and I clamp my, my block right at the very end of the uh, ruler. So that is going to be an eight inch cut, as long as this block here never moves i could just make eight inch cuts all day and it would take i could probably do like a thousand in an hour i'm not even kidding okay maybe i am maybe a couple hundred but let's go ahead uh, i'm gonna see if i can't rig up this camera and take some photos for you okay so i have my uh, wood set up it's pushed against the block here all i gotta do is fire up this table saw and i'm gonna slide my uh, cross cut sled until the board is completely cut and then i'll flip it so it's a perfect eight by eight square all right let's do it oh by the way nita's filming inside the house so get ready for her to yell at me Alright, there you have it. That is a perfect 8x8 square. Now, I just need the frame. So before I touch anything, I already know this cutting distance here is 8 inches. Alright, so out of the four pieces for my frame, two of them are going to be a perfect 8 inches and it's going to match this exactly. Alright guys, as you can see, they're perfectly the same size, 
Got some, you know, tear out at the end, but no big deal. Like I said, we'll sand that out. And just to get an idea. Look at that. That's a perfect fit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, Nina might know what she's doing out there with the embroidery machine, but where it matters, where you can lose fingers like that. You can lose fingers. You can lose hands. You could die out here. And she's worried about me breaking a little tool. <laughs> All right, guys. So I got one more trick for you. So as you can see, I have this wood. Um, the two pieces of the frame that I just cut, they're going to be right across from each other. I got the eight inch part here. Um, without having to do math and try to add up, you know, where exactly I need to put my stop block. All I do is put my frame how it's supposed to go. Put it against the blade, um, put my second piece of frame on the outside, and then I clamp my stop block right here. And now I know when I make the cut that it's going to be perfect length from here to here, exactly how I want it. So no measuring needed. It is what it is, and that's what you go off of. So uh, it ends up being, let's see. Eight inches plus one and a half inches. So nine and a half inches is a rough estimate. Sometimes it's a little off. So if you're just going off measuring, you might run into problems where it's either a tad short or a tad long. If it's a tad long, no big deal, easy to fix. If it's a tad short, you're going to have to cut again. You have to find more wood. You know, you just wasted that wood. So that's why I do it this way. So it's perfect every time and I don't have to keep coming back making more cut. So real quick, uh, I'm picking out the wood that I'm gonna use for the frame. Normally, if it was for family or friends, I'm gonna make that up front and in the picture. I want it right in the center. I want everyone to see it. I love knots. I love knots. I like imperfections in my wood. But because it's Etsy and um, people will literally complain over everything and want a free item and you don't want a bad review, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut it so uh, that part gets cut off. It sucks, but it's better than having to make another project or sending someone's money back in. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to gotta bite it, bite the bullet. I think you guys kind of get the picture of how the cutting works, so I'll just go ahead and cut it, and then we'll move into the next subject. All right, so everything is sanded. I already took care of these, and I went ahead and I sanded this down with the 80 grit sandpaper just like I did those. And I really recommend you guys not to worry about sanding it past 80 grit. When you're painting something and you're sanding it up to 220 grit, it doesn't really matter anymore. Because as soon as you paint it, it's not going to be 220 grit. You know, like a cutting board. If I was doing a cutting board, I'm hitting it with 80, uh, 150, and then 220. Otherwise, that's the only time it like really matters is on that fine furniture. If you cover this with a... Uh, a um, to cover this with paint or a any kind of like matte finish uh poly it's not going to matter you you know it's not going to be uh it's not going to be as smooth as your 20 your 220 grit and it's just going to waste a lot of your time and it, having two kids and uh, multiple Etsy shops and a day business i don't want to spend any more time out here sanding than i have to especially cuz i hate sanding easily the worst job I can't wait till my kids are old enough to handle that for me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stain these for you guys and uh, go inside and paint this. All right, so the stain that she picked out, or the buyer picked out, I don't know if it's a girl or boy, is Golden Oak, and that's by Minwax. This is an oil-based finish, so it does take a little bit longer to dry than the uh, water-based, but with oil-based, you get a lot more protection than you would with a water base. You honestly don't even need to uh, finish the frame in a poly if you're going to use an oil base. It's going to be pretty protected. So I'll go ahead and uh, maybe set up the camera somewhere so you can see how I do it and get into it. I need a second to take a breath to keep me guessing with what you said. You're in my head.
would do with this board, if there was any holes, which luckily there isn't, this is a very nice piece of wood, I would fill it in with some wood filler and then sand it off so it's nice and flat and let that wood filler dry before I go and paint it. So since we're, uh, we're done out here, let's go ahead, go on inside. Okay, so I moved everything inside. The quality got better because I'm using the wife's camera. Um, for the base paint that we use, we use a paint and primer in one by Bear. I think this Bear is from um, Home Depot, I believe. Not sure. But uh, so we, it's a white flat paint for interior. That means it doesn't have like any kind of uh, sheen to it, I guess, like a bathroom or a, a semi gloss or an egg. What's it called? Eggshell finish. And then I use a foam brush, which has just been sitting here. So it's uh, been used. Looks like there might be a little bit of drying, but we reuse here. There's no point to use a new brush every time you do one sign. It wouldn't really be economical. So I just super lazy about it. I dip it in. Get a nice finish. You know what? I didn't really mix it, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix it with the brush. So normally I do this in about three coats, three heavy coats. I try to get it on thick, and then um, after I do all my coats, I give it a little sanding so it has a nice smooth finish. So when I spray paint it, it looks beautiful. I haven't made a sign this small in a while, so that might be too much paint. See that? Nita's gonna kill me. <gasps> camera. I don't know if the camera can see it, but Nita's gonna kill me. You better not get no paint on my camera. No paint on my camera. It's do it. It's a crafting camera. No. It's for crafting. Have you seen craft? Have you seen painters? They wear the overall, they got everything on it. Why? Get with the system. Why do you do this? Do what to you? Torture me. <laughs> yeah, you use a lot. Because I mixed it. Okay, so guys, that's a lot of freaking paint. Don't do it like me, but you'll oh, see. Rookie. We'll see who's a rookie at the end of this video. Look at guys. The awesome thing about this paint is it's water-based. Water will clean it up. You can even let it dry and chip it off. It's so simple. Oh yeah, I always you always get paint on the countertops, and I always have to go back and use my nail and chip it away. You guys hear that? Mhm. Mm ignore it. Just ignore it. She needs attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, let this dry, and come back. Okay, guys. So you guys probably have heard Nita saying. I'm a rookie. I'm making rookie moves. Let me tell you. Check this out. Is this something a rookie would do or a seasoned vet? You tell me. Seasoned That's a vet move. Not a veterinarian. A veteran. Been in this game for a long time. She doesn't even know how to thread her thing over there. Look at Guys. I'm so overwhelmed right now. I'm really overwhelmed. See your Mountain Dew? It's fun to be Mountain Dew. <laughs> Everyone, email Mountain Dew down below. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I'm a seasoned vet. Okay, so after that tip I gave you guys, this is now fully dry in about 15 minutes. I would have been waiting a lot longer. The good thing about flat paint too, it dries really quick. So. I'm just going to go ahead, I'm not going to dip it again, there's plenty of paint on it. I'm going to give it another coat. And these other coats will actually go on a little bit thinner. You know, I'm going to actually put a little bit more on the brush. So I'm just going to put just a little bit more. I 
All right. Now we just let dry again. Okay, so since I do all the dangerous stuff in the garage that risk my life, my limbs, and all that jazz, I go ahead and I let my wife use the Cricut Maker to cut out the stencil. She's looking at me all crazy, guys. Okay, so my wife happily applied a piece of vinyl. Is that what is this? Stencil vinyl. It's called stencil vinyl on a cutting mat that comes with the Cricut. Cricut Maker. So this is a much needed tool if you plan on making any kind of wood signs with a painted finish. You could also use a silhouette cameo. Something like that. Something like that. We don't use it, but uh, Simply Sally does, and she is a pro, so check her out. All right, we're going to go ahead, cut this stencil out. And now it's gonna get really loud and do its thing. Okay, anyways guys, so um, we're gonna go ahead and start weeding out this vinyl, but I'm gonna take it off the mat first. So something that's really, 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 really important about stencil, yeah, I can't talk. Really important about stencil vinyl is you don't want any bubbling, because if you get any bubbling, that means it's going to cause um, your project to leak, and we don't want any leaking. So one tip, is to flip your mat over and you're going to kind of roll it back so i'm holding down just the very tip of the vinyl and i'm going to roll the mat back as much as i can without breaking the mat because you can't snap the mat and then there's our stencil i'm going to go ahead and trim the vinyl Okay, and because this is stencil vinyl, we're going to basically take, uh, we're basically going to um, use our weeding tool and weed out the actual design. I need a scarecrow after what you did. All of the birds know that I'm almost dead. I'm barely breathing. I'm barely awake. You left me in pieces. There's no more to break. Don't wake me up. Not in this century. Okay, so there is the weeding part. So I'm all done with the weeding part, so now I need to add some transfer tape to it. Um, I definitely don't re recommend this transfer tape, but because we have a big roll of it, we kind of are just trying to get rid of it, basically. my <laughs> Okay, so when applying the transfer tape, again, you want to make sure there's no bubbling on your design because if there's bubbling, then that means there's going to be bleeding. And we don't want any of that. There is the design. This is by far like one of our one of my favorite designs that we have on our Sawdust Over Glitter Etsy shop. 
Um, this is actually our first sell of this design, so I'm hoping that we'll get many, many more. Okay guys, so I put on three coats of paint. It was dry to the touch thanks to the oven. And I go ahead and I just grab a, um, a 220 grit sandpaper that I use on my orbital sander. So I just fold it and I'm just going to use that to knock down, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of uh, bumps here so I like to knock those down so I get a nice smooth finish. That's it. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but no more of those bumps, which I think those bumps come from just the uh, paint from being a, re it's a really old paint that we had in the garage and uh, we've been using the crap out of it and it's been working great, so. There you go. Now all I need to have to do is apply the stencil, whichever way she chooses to apply it. And we're on to painting. There's a distance between us It's getting hard to reach out haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but I'll stay till the finish line And I've been counting minutes For quite some time now just to see you again And I've been counting days To get away To see you again See you again Been fighting ways To get away To see you again See you again Okay, so we went ahead and just, <laughs> we got it set up and I taped it off. Uh, we had to turn the camera back, or we had to turn the camera off earlier just because uh, my wife was about to throw the board across the room, so. She got it done, and then I went ahead and taped it off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that brush, I'm not gonna apply any more paint to it because I want it to go on really thin. I'm just gonna paint over the stencil with the same color as the base coat, so in this case white, but let's say you're making a black sign or a green back sign. You would use whatever color the, what is that, the background of the picture would be. So it's just to seal off the stencil so you don't get any leakage. You probably still get some leakage, but it'll help. Disclaimer guys, make sure to not cheap out on the transfer tape. I don't know if you can hear me all the way over here, but don't cheap out on the transfer tape like I did because I just spent 30 minutes puffing and puffing and cussing. Yep. Jesus, Stitch. So spend the extra 10 bucks or whatever the price difference is and get the good stuff and save yourself a ton of frustration. So once I get it all covered, this uh, top coat will dry so quick. You honestly don't even need to let it dry all the way. I mean, you want it to be somewhat dry, but... You don't need to wait two hours. Okay guys, so uh, I'm not gonna show you how I spray it just because uh, you know, I pissed me off enough this <laughs> last couple weeks and if I got any spray paint on a lens of her camera, 
there would be no more Mr. Fajita. So this is the paint we use. It's Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Paint Primer in one. We got it in black, and I really enjoy the uh, spray tip. So I really do recommend this paint. Um, give it a try if you want to do these signs. And so, since I'm not going to show you, I'm just going to explain to you real quick that I'm going to do three coats, maybe four. Uh, the first coat will be fairly light. Second coat, I'll thicken it up a little bit, and then usually the third coat is the final coat. If I'm not happy with the results, I'll do one more coat. Make sure you wear a respirator or do it outside because this stuff will mess you up. And you only got one brain. So that's not kill brain cells. So I just want to give you a close up of it. As you see, no bubbling. Nita did a really good job with this. It did tear right there, but I just put a little bit of a painter's tape over the tear and it's good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it and I'll bring it back to you guys. Okay, so I already sprayed it. You literally, it takes seconds to spray. Um, if it was a little bit warmer, I might wait a little bit longer to make sure that it gets a nice, each coat dries in between, but I don't have the patience and it's also like 2.30, so I'm not gonna sit there and wait 15 minutes in between coats. But I did wait 60 seconds or so. So, um, um, I left everything outside because I don't want to bring that smell inside and honestly the only thing left to do tonight would be to let it dry, peel it, and because I already stay in the wood I still got to wait for that stuff to dry so there's no point to even mess with it. Uh, that's going to be it for tonight. I'm going to check in tomorrow and I'll show you how I finish the signs. Alright. I want to know your secrets I want to be your lifeline So I wait for you, wait for me Wait for you, wait for me Tell me you're more than just a highlight Pretty pictures on the outside I hate to stare at you through these lights So I wait for you, wait for me Wait for you, wait for me Click and scroll, I can't let you go They say I'm addicted to you Click and scroll, I can't let you go They say I'm addicted to you Oh, oh, this ain't love, no, no This ain't love, no, no This is artificial Okay, so as, as you guys can see, there was a little bit of bleeding, but honestly, that's not that big of a deal because with just a steady hand, you'll be able to touch that up with some white paint. The good thing is, let's say you accidentally get a little bit of that on the black. Because that black's already dry and that's a water-based finish paint, you could just wipe it right off. You could even wet a little napkin and wipe it off that way. Never panic. All right, guys. So after you touch it up, uh, you let that paint dry. Bring it outside. I'm going to use a pin neller, so it shoots out 18 gauge nails, and I believe they're inch and a quarter. Got to double check. But I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to uh, connect pieces of the frame together. So two nails here, two nails here, and then I'll go around putting two nails on each side. Honestly, one nail per side going into the um, picture frame would be enough. 
But because we're shipping it, and because customers uh, might break it, and you don't want to get blamed for that, so you make it as uh, secure as possible. I've had one customer say that I did not nail it right. When I know when I nail my uh, my signs, I put excessive nails in it, and uh, for it to have broke, she would have had to either drop it from a very high point because I've dropped these off the wall before and um, they still stay together or um, she messed up the picture because it was a blank sign and then she just wanted a new one and I'm not going to make a new one and send it out to her I'm just going to cancel give her her refund and be done with her or him so I'll put one And two. So, your first L. Alright, since the wood we use is kind of thin, it's a half inch, but it's actually like four tenths of an inch. Uh, you want to make sure that you're really at the tip over here. Right at the edge, just a little bit before the edge. And go ahead, make sure it's at a 90 degree angle with the wood, and let it go. No nail went through the front. No nail went through the back. Sometimes these nails have a mind of their own. But looks like we got it. So same thing to this side. Perfect. There you guys have it. Now let's go inside and put the hanger on the back. Okay guys. My son got mad because I just turned off uh, his favorite YouTuber, Blippy. But real quick, I'm gonna show you how we do the hangers on the back. We prefer we prefer the screw-on hanger. Um, we've had nail on, and they're the biggest headache to get on. So I just use the ruler, find a good spot for it, make sure it's even. Uh, Nita's little Cricut ruler is perfect because it has these lines in it. So uh, I line up the lines, uh, eight inches from board to board. So let's go ahead and we'll put it. Right at the halfway mark. So four. All right, so it's about an inch down from the frame in the center of the board. Get your handy dandy screw gun. Makita's the best, DeWalt sucks. That's for all the ladies with husbands, I'm sure they all like DeWalt. I mean, who wants a yellow tool? All right, so I don't sink down the first one all the way, just because it will make it hard to make sure it's even, so. And I just eyeball it, it looks pretty even. Wow, so cool. You guys caught that on camera. This screw just ripped in half. All right, well, let's try this again, guys. And now, because there's a half embedded screw right there, I'm gonna have to do it a little at an angle to avoid that. I could uh, unscrew it, but I think there's enough room. Okay, so I never had this much tr trouble getting one of these in. Of course, it's when I'm on camera. Go ahead and tighten down the other side. So there you go, guys. This ain't going anywhere. I can hold it. I can shake it. We solid. And that's it. You have a frame. See, it's a little crooked, but it's not going to hang crooked. It'll hang straight. All right. Now, we'll show you how we uh, package it up. Okay guys, for packaging, uh, we get bubble wrap from Lowe's or the Home Depot. And then we get a big roll of, what is it, construction paper? I'm not even sure what to call it. 
But first we wrap it in the bubble wrap. And then we wrap it in the paper. And that's it. So if it was a bigger frame, I would make sure to put something here. Actually, no, I'll do that for you guys anyways. You got scrap wood anywhere? Okay, so with the bigger frame, I would definitely put a big piece of cardboard on it. Just to help it from, um, I guess, pushing through. But I'm using the US. This is a recycled mail. We got this delivered already. So these are my uh, shock absorbers, kind of. I'll go ahead and measure that. Cut it down to size. Make sure to grab your wife's fabric scissors. They're gonna be the sharpest tool. They'll get the job done quick. <laughs> Hopefully I triggered y'all. Now they know why my sister so <laughs> Now they know why all my boxes look so good. Okay guys, so I learned this from uh, Simply Sally, right? This is how Simply Sally does it. So Give it a few rolls. All right, that should be good. Go ahead. Cut that out. Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Cut that out. Get some tape. I like to tape it down. And then I, I fold these sides so the corners are protected. I fold them in, fold over. Tape. Do the same to this side. And tape. Okay, so we're almost done. Now get your big roll. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing. Get a few rolls. All right, there it is. It's pretty tight. It feels nice and thick of the paper. Oh, Get your wife fabric scissors on the time. Go ahead and make sure it's nice and tight. And then there's a few ways you can fold this over and tape it that way, make sure it's nice and thick, but I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. Just because it looks better. Alright, and then you're just wrapping a present. Alright, and then once you're done with the scissors, make sure you put them back where they were so your wife doesn't know you took them. And it's pretty much packaged. Now, the thing is, the UPS. They don't like things wrapped in brown paper like this because I guess they could hook up on their uh, conveyor belts or something. I don't know. But, I mean, out of all the times we went to the UPS store to drop off packages, only once they said they didn't want it. And we just went to the next UPS store and they took it. So, to prevent that, I taped the crap out of it. I say crap. 
So this thing will be a, will be a plastic box when I'm done with it. Once you get it wrapped that way, I go across this way. I like to throw on some Etsy tape just to make it look a little pretty. Alright guys, it's done. Now I'll get the shipping label, get it out of here. Alright guys, so the sign ended up weighing one pound eight ounces and we checked on stamps.com, uh, you know, which would be cheaper, UPS or USPS. They ended up being the exact same price, so we're going we're gonna to ship it USPS just so we don't have to stop at the UPS tomorrow since every day we go to the USPS. So, And that's it. So there you go. There you have it from start to finish, from start to post office. That's it. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, share with anyone who might want to make a sign, who might want to start at Etsy, who wants to see how it's done. So I appreciate all the support I'm getting. Please subscribe. Check out Nita Pita's channel. Check out Simply Sally's channel. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't be making these signs today. It actually took about a few months of my wife nagging me to make these before I really jumped in, and I'm so glad I did. I should have jumped in sooner. She was right. All right, guys. Appreciate it. You guys have a good rest of your day. Good evening. Good night. Good afternoon, whatever time it is. Bye.